live in your currency. Splurge your millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency, my money in the privacy. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of No BS with Birchy Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Birch, and this is a show unraveling the truth to the facade of the 21st century. We're now exiting the matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. Uh, today, guys, we're going to talk about something really special, really important to me, and that is that property prices are not going up. They're not in a bubble. They never have gone up. They don't go up. And uh, I will pull a little chart up for those of you that are watching on YouTube uh, today. It's a little chart. Just, um, yeah, I haven't got it here in front of me, but I know it is etched in my head. So I'm going to pull this chart up. Uh, this chart here shows um, the house prices in uh, in Australia over the course of the last 100 years. So if you see the house prices all the way up until about the 1950s, 1960s, they're actually going sideways or in decline. So if we look at the the, the flat line there on the at the start of it, um, basically from early 1900s to the mid 1900s, uh, these the, the property market did nothing, and uh, that is because we had sound money. That's very interesting, right? Why did the property market not go up for 50 years? But for the last 50 years, we've seen it going nuts, right? And just keeps going higher and higher. So if we look at um, significantly around sort of 1960, 1970, started going up in value, sort of over a period of um, you know 50 years, the house prices didn't move out of a range um, at all. They're still they're locked in a range for a period of 50 years. But as we hit into a 10 year period between 19 60, 1970, even in the early 1980s, it sort of doubled in value just in that 10, in that 10, 15 year period. Uh, then from there, it went sideways as they increased interest rates. Then from the early 90s, um, when interest rates came down, we saw the property prices adjust a little bit, go sideways for you know a period of eight years, nine years, and then take off. And then they just keep taking off, taking off. And each time that the property market goes up, it appears that it goes up higher and higher and higher in value. And there's a reason behind that. It's not because you're a great investor. It's not because I'm a great investor. It's understanding how the monetary system is fake. Uh, We use fiat currency, which stands for fake money. Uh, Fiat currency is what we use. And central banks change a lot of things uh, along the way, which has caused this, if you want to call it a housing bubble, it's a housing bubble. If you don't want to call it a housing bubble and you understand how it works, you realize that it's a, a currency bubble that we're in. And you'll see that the whole game is rigged and you know it, it goes deep, very much deeper than the property market because it's not just the property prices have gone up, it's your food that's gone up, it's your clothing that's gone up, it's your vehicles that have gone up, it's your living expenses have gone up, it's everything's been inflated away. So I wanna look at some really just basic numbers here um, and people say property prices double every 10 years. Uh, I wanna go and debunk that and, and have a look at it and get to the understanding of why these property prices are going up. And this will give you a bit of clarity as to where this market will go into the future and uh, what to watch out for and what will happen when these things sort of arise. So if we look back in the early 1990s, probably looking at about $200,000 for a property in Sydney. Let's say that we're talking about a property in Sydney, uh, in the west, you know, close to Sydney, not in the city, but just close to Sydney. Um, let's say a property in 1990 was worth $200,000. Let's assume that you had an interest rate of 18% for your property. So you go out and assume you bought a property with a full loan on it um, and you got uh, a loan at 200 grand at 18%, it means that you would have been paying uh, $36,000 a year worth of interest. So let's use that as a starting point. Uh, if we go fast forward to uh, the year 2000, we had the dot-com bubble that busted, we had um, uh, September 11, we had all different things that occurred. Um, the mar- property market doubled, but something different happened. So the prices went from 200 to 400, which it appears is doubling, but the interest rates went down from 18% down to about 8%. So at that point, if you had a loan and you purchased a property in 2000, you would have bought the property for $400,000 and you would have put down a smaller deposit because back in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s, the deposit levels are getting smaller and smaller and smaller because people need to be able to afford the deposit. So they're allowing you to put down less. Uh, But secondly, if you were to get a loan for the full amount of $400,000 at 8% interest, uh, 8% on $400,000 would be uh, $32,000 per year in interest rate. So if you bought a property in the year 1990 at 200 grand with an 18% interest rate, 
then you would have been paying 36000 So you would have been paying more, even though the property was only half the price back in 1990. If we look at um, the property market, say, in 2010, 2012, um, you know, and that property gone up from uh, 400000 to uh, 800000 the market doubled. The question is, is, why did the market double? Why did the property go up from 400 grand to 800 grand? And that was because uh, interest rates went down from 8% down to 5%. So if your property's now at 800 grand and you're paying 5% interest rate, your interest rate and the cost of holding it uh, is $40,000 a year. Whereas back in 1990, which was sort of 20 years prior, interest rate was uh, four times the amount almost, and uh, the, the holding costs were very, very similar. So we've got you know, three different cycles there. And we fast forward to 2020, 2021, which is where we're at at the moment. And those properties may be worth one and a half million dollars. Let's call it 1.6 million, doubling from 800 to 1.6. Um, and what is our interest rate currently at the moment? People are out there paying two, two and a half percent interest rates in the marketplace. Let's say that you've got a 2% interest rate at a 1.6 purchase price that meaning that you're paying $32,000 a year in interest. So if you look at that period of sort of 30 years that has passed on, what has happened to the property prices? It appears to everyone that the market has gone up significantly and people can't afford it. But in reality, people still can very well afford to purchase a property because they're paying a lower holding cost to acquire that asset. So two things that come to mind here. One is people keep asking me, oh, Nathan, what happens when interest rates go up? Well, if interest rates go up, everybody's going to die, right? Financially, everyone will go bankrupt. So you'd be right in thinking that. And there's, you know, it's very, very, uh, you know, important to look at that. Um, But we've just seen them try and artificially keep this market alive. Uh, The property market's in palliative care, right? It's hooked up to all these machines to try and artificially keep it alive. Was the property price ever worth $1.6 million? It is depending on what the interest rate is. If interest rate was free, you'd be living in the house for free. If the interest rate was 1%, then you know the property would go up to 4 million and it would still only cost you $40,000 a year or 800 bucks a week to hold that, that property. So where the big uh, win has been is if you can take a property from a previous time, take it through a market cycle, watch the currency get devalued and you can pay off today's debt with tomorrow's dollar, which is an inflated dollar, meaning that your debt is becoming irrelevant with inflation. That is a very complex sort of uh, topic for us to all understand. Uh, But once you really get that, you understand the real wealth in real hard assets. And I think over the course of this next decade, we're going to see a lot of people in a lot of famine because they won't be able to afford to simple things such as food, groceries, whatnot. I went out recently in the last week and went to the shops. I never go to the shops. I get a lot of stuff sent to me. I get a lot of whole food sent to me and whatnot. I never look at the actual cost of the bill. And I was walking around the shops, seeing people pushing their trolleys around. And I was thinking like, what would this person be earning per year? What is their income? What is their family situation like? How can they live? How can uh, a person have uh, you know, a partner and children and survive in this world that we're living in today um, with the cost of rising food? And that's where people are gonna be pushed and pushed and pushed. And it's harder and harder to live in this world today, just given the fact of how everything is rising. And you know, that is where the real power comes in it. So if you had money, Right? And people think money is the dollars that we use. Money is real money, uh, is based on you know tangible wealth, which is gold, silver, copper, you know things that have been used for trade beforehand. This fake monetary system, they're printing more and more money every week, and it's losing more and more of its value. So, in essence, if you earn a thousand dollars this week, um, you know that thousand dollars will not buy. It'll buy $1,000 worth of goods this week. But tell me, when in the future will it buy you more than what it could this week? Because your money never buys you more than what it does the day that you earn it. Um, so just get that one really, really clear. Right? Like your the, the currency, which is the real term for it, um, which is the currency that we're using, if you earn $1,000, you will not be able to buy the same in 2020, it's 2021 now, in 2022, you for that same thousand dollars you'll be able to buy less and less goods with that because it is losing its value why is it losing its value and that is because they're printing more and more of this fake currency fiat currency so 
once you get your head around that, you realize that the debt becomes easier and easier to pay off. Your asset is getting inflated in value. If if you could have at the start of 2020 bought those $1 hamburgers from McDonald's, you could have bought a thousand hamburgers for a thousand dollars. Uh, in 2021, those hamburgers are selling for $2.50, meaning that you can only buy 400 of those hamburgers. We used to be able to buy a thousand of them. So you've lost 60% of your purchasing power just at McDonald's in that front. And that same thing applies to every sort of area. Tell me, I mean, I, I mean, I'm excited to hear if someone can tell me something that they could buy more of in 2021 than what they could have in 2020 or more in 2020. Um, 20 than they could in 2016 or 15 um, and it's just coming down to the destruction of our currency and uh, eventually our currency will lose all of its value and be worthless and uh, it'll cause a, a thing called a hyperinflation this is a concept that i talked about maybe five years ago a lot of haters on uh, on youtube at the time told me i was off my head and whatnot um, i actually did a, a five-part webinar series on uh, on this topic in 2018 or 2017 uh, it's called raw and uncut if you go to youtube and look up the folder raw and uncut you'll find about 10 hours worth of me talking about these topics and things that could occur in the future uh, which we're really starting to see it today and we're really at the early days of a hyperinflation and i think that the course of this next decade we're going to see the cost of everything skyrocket so when it comes down to you know property prices are we in a bubble for property sure we are right are we in a bubble for food sure right everything's being manipulated we're getting less and less and we're getting you know worse and worse quality so a house in 1990 you would have ended up with a quarter acre block or a 500 square meter block uh, now you'll end up with 200 square meters and no eaves on your house and no backyard and it'll be like a prison cell that you get to buy for the privilege of spending a million dollars plus in sydney so the quality of your food, you're getting less food for your money, you're getting not as good food, you're getting, you know, we're living in this world where things are being manipulated. So if we're looking at a property market and thinking, you know, are we going to see a property crash? We could see a crash. Um, what would cause a property crash? Uh, deflation would blow this whole system up. And the central banks around the world know this. Um, you know, a lot of people go to their politicians and go, oh, you know, I'm going to vote for Liberal, I'm going to vote for Labor. Um, you know, they're going to do a better job. How dare the politicians do this? They're going to tax and spend or whatever. Uh, you've got the same puppet, right? It's all working with the same currency. So you're either going to have liberal or you're going to have labor one will create currency and spend or one will tax and spend uh, if you create currency out of no out of thin air there's a thing called inflation which is a silent tax and everybody's paying that silent tax today tax is meaningless because there's a greater tax out there and that is the erosion of your currency if you can take enough assets through this time uh hold on to them for dear life and um hodl <laughs> some of our bitcoin and crypto friends will understand that um, but hold on for dear life and take it through um, the currency reset that i think we'll see over the course of this decade as we enter towards 2030 um, it's going to be a wonderful time because you can pay off debt with fractions of currency so um, uh, going back in the 1990s uh, a wage of you know thirty thousand dollars a year would have been considered an average wage whereas an average wage today in 2020 could be you know 10 years ago it was probably 50 grand 60 grand 70 grand 80 is going higher and higher at the moment um but you could pay off you know a debt from today with tomorrow's currency uh, as we get to the later phases of uh hyperinflation and loss of our currency we're going to see you know what could have been a fifty thousand dollar wage five years ago turn into a million dollars a year so if someone's earning a million dollars a year they'll feel like they're a king or queen but if a Big Mac meal has gone from $10 to $250 for the Big Mac meal, you're not going to be buying much for the currency that you're earning. And that's the world that we're going into. So if, uh, in every time that we've seen a hyperinflation, go and research hyperinflation out there. I will do more discussions and, and podcasts around the topic of hyperinflation, philosophy of money and uh, other sort of uh, topics which will join into this. But go and research countries that have had a hyperinflation. There's been over 10,000 fiat currencies throughout you know, our recent history. When I say recent history, over the last 1,000 years, there's been over 10,000 fiat currencies, so fake monies that have been created, like the dollar that we've got today, and they've all ended up as a zero value. Uh, most uh, you know, fiat currencies have 
um, died within the first sort of 27 years of existence. However, the dollar is the longest one that we've ever seen. The dollar was actually created in 1971. Even though that we were using the dollar beforehand, the current format of our dollar was created on the 15th of August 1971. So we're almost 50 years into our currency and it has been manipulated and it is on its deathbed. It is going to collapse our currency. Just make note of that we will lose our currency in this decade. Um, if you could take a $200,000 debt or a $300,000 debt through a currency reset, if you're if we end up in a hyperinflation scenario where someone's on $50,000 a year income, they're suddenly on a million dollars a year, but they can't afford to buy food each week to put on the table, that's a very bad position. But if you could take that, um, that, 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 that new currency, because there's just so much of it sloshing around in the system, and use that to pay off your debt, you're going to retire your debt, and it's going to be very, very easy to pay out the debt, because you can pay off the debt that you took from, you know, people say, you know, someone from the 1970s was really lucky that they got a property um, and they paid a very small amount of money for it. Well, you try paying 19, 20% interest rates for that. If we had a 5% interest rate environment today, and I'm just saying if we went from 2% interest rate all the way to 5%, that means that, you know, it's only 3% higher, everybody's mortgage would probably die because they couldn't afford just a 3% increase. But we're talking about, you know, almost a 10 times increase people were paying 20, 30, 40 years ago on their interest rates from where we are today. It's not showing that the property market's a problem, it's showing that the currency is a problem and the currency is about to implode. Because if we have contraction of a monetary supply, all that money gets siphoned back out of the market and goes poof, back to money heaven, and there's no currency floating around the system for people to be able to use. Um, and we're living in a world now which we didn't live in beforehand, where it's, it's very, becoming easier and easier to, to be able to obtain debt. Um, people literally go to their house and use it as an ATM. Do I think it's right? No. Right? People are forced to have to go and you know, refinance their property to put an extension on. They're forced to go out and pull out money from their property and use that as a deposit to go and buy a car or whatever the case may be. It's just that we're losing our freedom, we're losing our rights, we're losing our opportunity and purchasing power. Um, that is the, the unfortunate part by it. But if you can structure yourself, and it's not all doom and gloom, I think it's the most fabulous thing in the world, right? It's, uh, it's really, really uh, exciting. And it should be, like if you're not excited about it, you need to change something, you need to change your mindset, you need to change your understanding of how currency works. Um, but yeah, like we're in a world where the currency is, is constantly losing its value. It's, tell me, like, you know, think about it yourself. If you think it's all, oh, you know, what you're saying is scary, it doesn't make sense, or whatever the case may be, sit there and think, can I buy the same things as what I could have a year ago, or five years ago, or 10 years ago? Take the whole corona scandemic out of the equation and then take ourselves back to the old world we used to live in and think about what we could do with our with our, our purchasing power. Think about what we could do with our freedom and our, and our options. You have less and less options. So if this is the, you know, the, the world that we live in, then what choices and what decisions can you make today which will improve your life moving forward? So yeah, looking at um, house prices, did they go up? I remember when I bought my first property, I bought it for $248,000 and I was very scared of the fact that I had a $248,000 purchase. I had about a two hundred and ten dollars or a $208,000 loan, whatever that works out to be, like a 15% deposit I put down on it. Um, and I thought I was going to go bankrupt because I had a loan of $200,000. $200,000 loan today is very, very easy to retire that debt. Um, a lot of people are out there buying a car today you know, just a simple family car to get you around is sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars just to buy you a very normal brand name car. So, um, and most of those people are having to finance those vehicles, and uh, those vehicles are depreciating in value. So, you know, can you take the debt and turn it into your asset? Uh, for me, I love debt. I love the fact of being able to understand how inflation works, and that's what's been probably my biggest driver and the biggest uh, thing that's made me successful being an investor, understanding how debt and leverage works, understanding the, the negative effect of inflation to that debt and how I can get my properties for free because I'm at points now in, in my portfolio where I've got properties that are worth 500 grand I paid 100 grand for, they're renting out for $400, $500 a week, um, they're bringing in 20% returns on what I paid for them 
but the, the, the income has been inflated, the value of the property has been inflated, and now the cash flow coming in from the said properties are paying off the debt, which is becoming more and more worthless. So, you know, if I had a million dollars into my bank account today, you know, a lot of people think, you know, if I've got a million dollar mortgage and I get a million dollars come in my bank account, they'll just go and pay out their mortgage and they'll go, I've got no mortgage, I don't have to pay 3% interest on it at 30 grand a year. If I had a million dollars come in my bank account and I had a million dollar mortgage, I'd be sitting there thinking, okay, I could pay out the mortgage and then I'd have $1 million worth of asset debt free. I'd save myself 30 grand a year, great. At the same time, I'd take that million dollars and go, okay, I could buy another million dollars worth of asset, meaning that I've got $2 million worth of asset that could be inflated. So if that turns from 2 million into 4 million, then I've got a larger asset base. But I'd take the cash flow, if I'm getting a million dollars bringing in say 7% return, that means I'd be getting 70 grand a year in, I'd rather keep the debt, get a new asset, and use the cash flow from that asset to retire the debt on the other one. So you know, everybody's position is different. Um, I guess it all comes down to mindset, understanding, and having the right knowledge. Uh, if you need help on that front, you can always call us, one 367 925 uh, Flick us an email at admin at uh, or go to our YouTube channel and check out all the videos there at youtube.com slash beinvested. As always, thanks a lot for watching, listening, and uh, subscribing. Uh, remembering that we're on Google, Spotify, and Apple Play with the podcast. We'll catch up soon. Have a great week. Bye for now. Like Bilal Sam, man, we're stuck in the matrix. This my advice, don't care if you take it. The dollar back to die soon to be hopper and blazing. This my two cents, don't care if you save it. Join be decentralized and you will see. You be lied to the whole time and it's the irony. Cause they do the exact opposite. You become a slave to the system. Enough your money, all they do is profit. There's no conspiracy theory. You better hear me. Crypto will set you free before the system does. I don't care if you do or you don't. But what I'm saying is the truth to the reason you choke. I've never been a failure. Excuse my behavior. Keep talking. Haters doing me a favor. And you're telling lies. I know what they've been telling you. I'm the opposite of Donald Trump. Trump of Australia is amazing, dead for the taking, my time is never wasted, just getting wasted, these girls say I'm really breathtaking.